Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be doing the eyeshadow palette tag. My favorite topic to talk about on my channel. So if you're ready for some good palette talk, then just keep watching. Hello, hello, how are you guys? Happy Friday. When I was thinking about what I wanted to film for today's video, today's actually my birthday that I'm filming this. So I kind of wanted something that was more easy to film, didn't take a lot of time, and just made me happy. So of course, when I saw Samantha March and Ali Glines create this tag, it was perfect for me, the perfect video idea today. So yeah, I'm dressed in athletic wear, my hair's in a ponytail. I do have some makeup on though. We're relaxed and we are enjoying the day today. So like I said, Samantha March and Ali Glines they did a tag video, they made it up themselves, and it is called the eyeshadow palette tag, and they came up with 13 questions about eyeshadow palettes, and you pick up the palettes, so I just had a lot of fun going through my collection and picking out the palettes for the categories. So let's just get into it, lots of fun stuff to talk about. So the first category is show your newest palette. So I actually have two palettes because I received them at the same time, and that is from Sigma. These are the Corderosa and the Enchanted palette. I've been wanting these but didn't want to buy them myself so I asked my boyfriend to buy these for me for my birthday so it's not breaking my low buy. So the first one is the newest one. This is Corderosa and it is this really beautiful warm tone palette. It's just one of those palettes where I definitely didn't need it so I didn't want to spend my own money on it but I jumped on the chance for somebody else to buy it for me and then I also kind of tacked on that I really liked the <laughs> Enchanted palette as well. So this one's older, but this one is really, really gorgeous. Ever since this came out, I've always really liked it, but Sigma isn't a prominent brand on my channel, so I never really picked it up. But secretly, I've always thought this palette was really, really stunning. So yeah, I asked for this one as well if we were ordering Corderosa. So I am so excited to dig into these palettes. I think on Sunday, this Sunday at 3 p.m. EST, I'm going to be doing a live, and this is the palette that I'm going to talk about in my live on Sunday. So next category category is show your oldest palette and this is a old school MAC palette. This is when MAC was really really popular on YouTube. Literally this palette is probably 10 years old and I even have my childish stickers on here. I was 14 10 years ago. This is my oldest palette. I mean some of the shades in here are older than others just because this is the palette that young teenage me made. I don't use this. It's so old but I definitely keep it for nostalgia because MAC was so big back in the day. I have some very old school shades like we have expensive pink, all that glitters, brulee, satin taupe, gold mine. I know this one is a popular one. What is this one called? Ooh, Jest was a popular one. We have Trax, Shadowy Lady. Oh, we have some really good classics in here. I keep this in hopes of one day recreating this palette with some fresh shadows. Again, just for the nostalgia of it. I think that'll be a fun video. Just purchasing all of these shades for a new fresh palette and creating looks with it. But yeah, this was it for me growing up. I loved MAC and this is my oldest palette. Show your most expensive palette. You guys probably already know. It is the Natasha Denona 28 pan palettes. So this one's the brown green one. And then we also have the purple blue one that's in my drawer. I just pulled this one out. These are like $260. They are very, very pricey. The quality on these are so good. I absolutely love them. For me, it's worth it, but obviously you don't need to spend over $200 on a palette, but I love these guys. I think they are amazing, amazing quality. So these are my most expensive palettes in my collection. Now, value-wise, it's probably not the most expensive, but just up front, it's the most expensive. And then of course, your most affordable palette, and these have to be all of my little e.l.f. bite-sized eyeshadow quads. So these are newer in my collection, but they are only $3, which is really awesome. So I had, you know, a couple of dollar shadows, but they aren't actually palettes. So I thought these sufficed as palettes, and these are pretty new to my collection. I'm not as experienced with them, but from what I can tell, some are better than others. So far, the best one that I've tried is Truffles. It's just a really good neutral one, but I've also tried some bad ones. So I actually am continuing to still play with these to get to know these, but these are my most affordable palettes. They are only $3, which is incredible. And I think even the bad ones, each and every one of these are worth at least $3. Show your everyday palette. Now, I don't really have an everyday palette personally. I am very experimental with makeup and I have a lot. So I try and shuffle through my makeup. So I wear a different palette basically every day. But I would say of the current moment, my 
ideal everyday palette is the ABH Sultry palette. I'm just really into neutral neutrals, like even the eye I have on now, it's a neutral neutral. And this is just really perfect. It has really beautiful shimmery shades because I love a good pop of glitter on the lid. So not necessarily glitter, but these shades are very, very metallic and foiled. I love that dimension. I love the corresponding shades that we have here. This right now of the current moment is my everyday ideal palette. You know, a while back it was soft glam. I played with my Vizzy Arts for a long time. So it just depends what year it is. But as of right now, I'm loving Sultry as my everyday palette. Show your most colorful palette. And this one was actually a lot more challenging for me than I thought because I had, you know, like the James Charles palette, but that actually has a lot more neutrals than I thought. And then I had the pastel palette from Morphe, which they're all colorful, but then it's not really bright. So there was a lot I was toggling between, but at the end of the day, I think this one is my most colorful. This is the NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette in the shade Bright. And I picked this one out because you have the entire rainbow in here, and then you, it, every single shade in here is completely colorful. It's a completely rainbow palette. So I've had this for a while. I use this a lot when I was in college and I didn't have quite the amount of nice eyeshadow palettes that I do now. For me in college, this was the way that I incorporated bright shadows into my collection. I used a lot of the greens down here for Halloween for my friend's makeup look. So this holds good memories as well. And I can't get rid of it for that reason, honestly, because I don't need it. But you know what? It's a really great, affordable, portable rainbow eyeshadow palette. And um, I think it does a good job. I wouldn't say the quality on this is amazing, but for the price, it's a really great way to incorporate some colors that you might not typically have in your palette. The next one is show your smallest palette. Look how cute this is. This is the Rachel Zoe and Lorac collaboration that came out around the holiday season, and this is the Hollywood Glamour Mini Palette. First of all, check out the colors in here. It is just so adorable and I've got to admit to you guys, I think I've only used this once and to be honest, I can't really remember what I think of it. I just remember it was really beautiful. It was quite affordable for Lorac and it is just this adorable little pocket size palette and I do need to use it because don't get me wrong, like the colors in here are really, really stunning. That's why I purchased it. I have not painted my nails yet, I know. I'm gonna do that tonight. I just haven't got around to it. For size reference, here's the ABH palette. Look how tiny it is. It is so, so cute. Then on the contrary, we have my biggest palette, which are these really big Morphe palettes. So this is the size of the original James Charles. This one in particular that I pulled out is the 39S. It's just gigantic. Like I said, I also have the James Charles palette, which is the same size as the one I happened to pull out first. But for size comparison, here is my largest palette and my smallest palette. So love this. That's quite funny. <laughs> By the way, I have gotten a couple questions. If I've used this since I've showed this in my palette collection video, I haven't used it yet. I'm so sorry. It is so gorgeous though. I don't know why. I just have so many palettes to try all the time, I feel. So the next one is show your palette with best memory. And I definitely, without a doubt, pulled out these Morphe palettes. This is the 25A and the 25B, and I don't know if I can ever get rid of these. These are what kind of really catapulted me into the makeup craze that I am in now. Uh, when I was in college, I always have loved makeup. I loved makeup when I was in high school. I loved makeup when I was in middle school, but obviously I didn't have my own money to really spend on makeup. So I remember sitting in my bedroom at my sorority house on, we had the lofted beds. I, so I was on my lofted bed. I ordered these palettes the day they came out. I waited for them to come out and I was so excited. This was like also one of my first orders where I was like rushing to get makeup at the launch date. And I chose these because I love the colors and this is typical me. I remember I couldn't decide which one I wanted so I got both. And I mean, I still have that problem which is why I ordered the entire Wayne Goss lipstick collection. Here you go, even back then I did it. And for me, this was a big purchase for myself because I didn't have a lot of money to buy a lot of makeup up like you know frivolously these ended up being so extremely used by me and they also were the palettes that I used when I first started getting into doing makeup on other people now obviously I did it quite unprofessionally I used to be really scared about the idea of being a makeup artist and doing other people's makeup then I realized in college people would 
pay me to do their makeup. So this is what I would use on them. Little, I charge them $5, so it's okay. <laughs> but this is what I use when I charge people $5 to do their eyeshadow. And uh, I mean, people love these shadows. They worked really good. And you know, for the situation that I was in, it was cheap for me to use this on people. People love the looks and these are really great colors. It, it's 50 shades of the same color brown, but everybody likes brown. So those definitely hold my best memory. These are how I got into makeup artistry and doing makeup on other people and really encouraged me to really deep dive into makeup and create my own channel and really express myself through my makeup. Show a palette worth the hype. That has to be the ColourPop Going Coconuts palette. I think so many people have this palette and it's just played old good. It's affordable. I think that's also part of the reason why there was so much hype. You know, ColourPop does a good job with their shadows and they're affordable and you can't beat it. And this color story in particular was really great because you kind of get every tone of neutral that you could need. It's really gorgeous. The quality is really great and I think it's completely worth the hype. You are not wasting any money when you purchase this palette. It's an approach palette it works it's affordable there's nothing you can say that's bad about this palette so absolutely 100% worth the hype next up is a palette that is not worth the hype and this palette is not bad I don't want to upset anybody like it's not a bad palette I do like it I just don't think it was worth the hype I don't love the color story I don't grab for it very often and that is the Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson collaboration the conspiracy palette and don't get me wrong like I got this the day it released I was so excited I love the whole marketing behind it I love the whole series that came out of it I think it was really great I got such great insight from it and so of course I had to purchase the palette but the palette itself this is like creators everything aside it's not worth the hype in my opinion I I don't find myself using it ever. Honestly, I don't think I've picked this up since my review. The quality is not bad. Nothing is bad about this palette. I just don't really like the color story like that. I don't think it's worth the hype. I don't feel inspired by this palette. I really do just feel like there's not a story to it. It's just kind of colors that Shane thought was pretty. And you can find me on this, but honestly, I don't think this palette is worth all the hype that it had. I think it's a good palette. And I think just with any other Jeffree Star release, it's fine, but this got so so, so much hype and it's not the best palette in the world and it got probably the biggest hype this industry has seen in a very very long time and I just I got it and then I didn't use it <laughs> so I, it wasn't worth the hype it had way too much hype the next category is show your favorite palette from a favorite brand you guys already know I'm going to pull out my Pat McGrath mothership bronze seduction Pat McGrath is my favorite brand bronze seduction is my favorite palette in the brand so here's what it looks like it just I don't know upon looking at it. It doesn't look that exciting But when you put it on your eyes is when you're like, oh my gosh And I feel so creative with this palette I feel like I can create so many different looks and no matter what look I create it looks beautiful I can create neutral looks everyday looks glittery looks red looks pinks looks everything I love this palette everything about this palette and I have to say though that new divine rose 2 palette that's coming out in June looks so gorgeous i think that one might be in competition with my bronze seduction who knows but i am so very excited to get that palette when it releases you guys i know you guys are excited too you have been messaging me but divine rose 2 i am so excited for so now it's time for the last category and that is show your most used palette so i actually have a couple palettes that i kind of in the back of my drawers i don't really use them anymore but for the hoarding purposes i keep them i don't know but i have palettes that i have used more than this but i would say this is my most used palette that is actively able to be used it's not expired or anything and that is my soft glam palette from abh it's just such a good one i kind of rediscovered this again during this quarantine i did a tutorial with it and then I kept going back and using it over and over because it's just a solid palette with some solid colors. It's just an ideal everyday palette for me. I know I mentioned Sultry but this one is also a very very close second. This is the palette that I use in my bridal kit. It's just I use it a lot on myself. I use it a lot on others so therefore all of the times I've used it accumulated it's definitely the most in my collection it's just so easy to go for it has such good classic colors that everybody wants i absolutely love soft glam that is it those are all of the categories of the eyeshadow palette tag thank you samantha and ali for creating this tag i love talking about eyeshadows so uh, there could not have been a more fun tag for me to do so what i want you guys to do if you don't have a channel fill in the categories down below in the comments i definitely want to see and if you do have a youtube channel of course do this tag. It's a fun one. Who doesn't like talking about palettes? So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I hope you take the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.